When I was a little girl, I would come home from church on Sunday and after peeling off my itchy, scratchy dress, layer after layer, I would reach my slip, my soft, silky white slip. Sometimes I would pull it all the way underneath my armpits into my skinny little arms and I would pretend that I was wearing a very glamorous strapless gown. I might even add a piece of jewelry, stick a flower behind my ear, or pick up a clipboard and pretend like I was Julie McCoy, cruise director of the love boat. <laughs> More often than not, I would pull that slip all the way up to my head so that the elastic just fit around my hairline, and I would pretend to be Mother Teresa. <laughs> yeah, that's not even remotely true. It just sounds better than I pretended to be a bride. You see, I played bride more than anything. I used to get my mom's old frothy 90s and I would flounce around the house and I would carry some hard bouquet of plastic flowers that was covered in dust and smelled like old people. <laughs> I loved it. I did. I always thought that it would be an easy path that I would take. It seemed so natural then, so easy to believe that the girl with the freckles and the big ears and the continuous string of unfortunate perms would grow up and find love and become a mama. The first man who proposed to me, well, yeah, let's just say the words were still hanging in the air and by the time we'd picked out our colors and settled on our wedding attendance. Looking back, this clearly wasn't a relationship based on any kind of reality. I mean, at one time, my hand to God, I'm not even lying, this guy wanted to be Batman. He used to practice jumping from rooftop to rooftop. Yeah. While Batman is my favorite guy to dress up in tights, there's only so much of that I could take before I started eating my own hair. <laughs> I did marry the second man who proposed to me. He made me laugh. We started to think seriously about a baby. I used to pray that God would give me a child, but I wanted that child to come with a father, one who wouldn't leave. I didn't want to do it alone. I'd been a first-hand witness to how difficult that is, and, you know, I never thought myself strong enough to do it solo. And I... I had doubts about this marriage, yet I yearned. The want in my heart and in my body was so real that I used to talk to it. It kept me company and filled me with hope. Someday, someday. After my fantasy marriage ended and I watched my sweet prince ride off to the nearest strip club, I began to pray that God would just give me peace, that, that he would replace the maternal want with a new purpose and an energy to forge towards it to seek new adventures and just quit worrying about the fact that, that I will never have anyone to leave Mimi's desert rose china to. Yeah, I often think about the women in my life, in addition to my mother, who helped form and shape me into the woman that I am today. My mother taught me that I could be anything and do anything I wanted. Mimi taught me that strength need not always show up with fanfare, that the most courageous thing I could do sometimes is just try. Mary has taught me so much about faith and about how it can sustain us in this life. Auntie Carla taught me about ABBA and Lacey J. Dalton and blue cheese dressing and all my children. <laughs> Nana introduced me to Robert Redford. She took me to see the way we were. She took me to see When Harry Met Sally. She taught me grace and dignity. Ma taught me that opening my mind also means opening my heart that it won't always feel pleasant and nice, but in such moments, we might find something even better. She taught me not to just follow my bliss, but to chase after it. It was an amazing day when I realized that my prayer had been answered. Not in the removal of wanting my own child, but in the addition of sweet, beautiful faces, born not from my body, but nestled in my heart nonetheless. I've been given Hayden and Holden, Jack Ryder and Huddy, Allie, Asher, and baby Aniston, Peyton, Ruth, and Jansen, Aubrey, and Carly, Gabe, Riley, Tanner, Corey, and Allie, Jake, and Jamie, and Isabel. My heart splits wide open every time I see their faces or hear their laughter or listen to a joke or watch a magic trick or pull a finger to make fake fart noises. <laughs> I laugh until I cry at their very serious dance moves, and I worry and I fret about what could face them with each new day. Whew, I have bought my weight in cookie dough. I have been there for births. I've seen prom pictures. I've sat through dance recitals, graduations, weddings. I've rejoiced at birthdays, applauded at performances, and slept in hospitals. 
Now, I'm physically only related, related to two of those names, but they are all a part of my family, part of my ever-sustaining tribe. I have learned that you don't have to be blood related to love and be loved in return. You don't need to share the same name in order to play an important role in someone's life. I really don't mourn the path not taken. Not really. I'm happy with where I am, sharing my love with so many. So today, as we celebrate mothers everywhere, I wish you well. I wish you love and light and peace and happiness. Be you a parent or be you someone like me. I am not a mother, but I do dress up like one on occasion. <laughs>